Welcome back to our special coverage in Philadelphia ahead of tonight's debate. On Sunday's Face the Nation, North Carolina Democratic Governor Roy Cooper said if Vice President Kamala Harris wins his state, she will be the next president of the United States. And here with me now is Governor Roy Cooper. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Um, so you introduced Kamala Harris at the Democratic National Convention. Uh, she is introducing herself to a lot of Americans tonight who are wondering more about who she is and her policies. Do you think that she needs to separate herself from President Biden? But we know she's her own person. She deserves a lot of credit for what the Biden-Harris administration has done. It has been significant with the generational investments that they've made. But I think she's already shown that she wants a way forward. She wants to make sure that she pays more attention to the middle class, address head on the costs that everyday families are feeling. Uh, she wants to take on Donald Trump to make sure that the tax burden uh, that the billionaires and the corporations, big corporations, take on the tax burden while the middle class and small businesses get help. So I'm, I'm excited about this campaign. I think that she can take the best from this administration, but also carve her own way in this mm -hmm. campaign. And I think that's what she's already doing. Now, the Trump campaign argues that she's had three and a half years to make some of these changes, yeah. to address the economy, to address the border, and she hasn't done it. What do you say? Three, three and a half years to provide child care stabilization during the pandemic, to connect every household and business with high-speed internet, to actually pass an infrastructure bill that's going to replace uh, water infrastructure and roads and bridges, uh, gun safety, making sure that we're bringing clean energy American jobs across this country. Yeah, she's done an awful lot. But there was a global uh, inflationary period after the pandemic that, that everybody faced. And the administration has worked to get costs down, so that's what she's doing. And she has a plan to do even more to target that. Donald Trump has no plan. And in fact, his plan is to put his tariff tax on everyday families. It's going to cost everyday families about 4000 bucks, and to make sure that he gets more tax breaks to his billionaire buddies. That's his plan. It's a pretty clear choice to me. Voters will have a choice in North Carolina. This is a battleground state. And I think, you know, a couple of months ago, we weren't talking about it as a competitive state. How has Kamala Harris changed the game there, if at all? Has it been closer because of her? Yeah, I, I think there is a real excitement with her candidacy. Compared to Biden? Uh, well, I, I think that, obviously, Biden, Harris, this was, North Carolina was their closest loss in 2020. Mm. But I think that Democrats were divided. And I think President Biden made a courageous and correct choice by mm. stepping aside mm. and letting Kamala Harris go forward. And I think that there is an excitement about it. When you, when you look at North Carolina, the last time we voted for a Democratic presidential candidate was Barack Obama in 2008. North mm -hmm. Carolina helped to make history. Mm -hmm. We want to help make history again here. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of excitement on the ground about this campaign. And plus, in our state, we elect our governor and council of state races mm -hmm. the same year that we elect presidents. Only a few states do that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on right now with uh, I'm term limited. And so right. my term will be over at the end of the year. Josh Stein is our current attorney general and Democratic nominee running against the most extreme right wing candidate, I think, in the history of North Carolina and maybe anywhere in the country in Mark Robinson. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe that that is going to help all of our Democratic candidates. I believe it's going to help Kamala Harris mm. in North Carolina. So you could see some that bad candidate. Potentially reverse coattails you could see at the state. No question about it. You got a candidate in Mark Robinson who says men should lead and not women, that abortion should be stopped, no exceptions, calling LGBTQ plus people filth, talking violence. This, this guy uh, would be a disaster. For our state. I want to ask about um, RFK Jr. because the Supreme Court in North Carolina said today that he can be removed from the ballot there. First of all, that has been holding up the sending out ballots to, uh, to voters. I'm curious for your take on that. But also, him not being on the ballot, does that make a difference in this race? Does that potentially hurt? 
Harris's I'll chances. start off with the last question first. No, it won't make a difference. This is a binary race. Uh, RFK Jr. has been a Trump front man from day one. He sued to get on the ballot in North Carolina. And on last Friday, all of our ballots had been printed. They were to go out. They were to be mailed to military, active military across the world. And our Republican Supreme Court granted RFK Jr.'s request to throw all of those ballots away and reprint the ballots. And now they're going to go out a couple of weeks late, hurting our military's ability to vote. This is this has been all about Donald Trump from day one. First, they want him on the ballot. They sue. Then they sue to take him off the ballot. It's all about their strategy. At the end of the day, it's not going to make a difference. This is a race between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, two very different ca candidates for the character and soul of this country. And it's time for people to be making that choice pretty soon. It could all come down to North Carolina. We will see, Governor Roy Cooper. Thank you thank very you. much for your time. We'll be spending some time in your state. So thanks in advance for having us. And